Hey everybody, get on in here. I'm gonna start us up some music. And let me find the music and I know exactly what I'm gonna play. Yep, where is, um... there we go. Standing there, sad look in his eye. I gets ran to the playground, but each one passed him by. He was just a new kid here, but then I saw his face. Mama's words raced through my mind. It was like I heard her say, Be a good deed, you ran to it every day. One kind deed will go so far, make this world a better place. Be a good deed, you ran, you may be surprised. Good to others makes you feel so good inside. Slowly I walked up to him. I said, What's your name? His eyes begin to sparkle and a smile crossed his face. He's not a stranger anymore. Now he is my friend. My life has been better. Because my mama said, be a good teacher and do it every day. One kind deed will go so far, make this world a better place. Be a good teacher and you may be surprised. Doing good to others makes you feel so good inside. Hey folks, I have only one. Oh, no, no, no. I have only one AirPod on because the other one didn't charge for some reason. I put it on to charge at, at noon and it didn't charge. And it's getting ready to rain here. It just looks like it's gonna break down and rain cats and dogs. Uh, let's see. Y'all, I can't take messages right now, private messages on on this, because I just can't see them. You know, you need to post them on, on the Facebook page. I can't take them here. Now, we got some good news. We got some praise reports. We got lots of things happening. And a true confession, I forgot my tea. And I'm not going to run in there and get it. I'm just going to do without until I get through with this, because I left the other day. Y'all didn't know where I was. <laughs> so get on in here. It's Sunday afternoon. Now, Ben has been rearranging furniture at his house without a female to help him. And he is worse than some old woman, I'm telling you. <laughs> He's worse than me. Now, I don't like to rearrange furniture. It drives me nuts. I told him he had to measure everything. And they started moving furniture. And here's the praise report. If y'all remember, a few months ago, Ben lost his wallet. And it was rainy and nasty out. He had just gotten out of the hospital. 
He was starving for something to eat. I had taken him by Sonics and he got some, oh, I mean, it just made my stomach turn what he got to eat. And he had had $100 in his wallet. That's all he had. But he also had his birth certificate in his wallet. <laughs> his social security card in his wallet and his driver's license that he had just gotten. I mean, had just gotten. And we were just beside ourselves. I mean, I drove back to the CVS where we had to pick up medication and it was rainy and nasty. I did it twice. Well, they moved the love seat out yesterday and guess what fell out of the love seat? His wallet. And thank the Lord, thank the Lord, because the money was still there. Everything was still there. And we're just all glorifying God over it because I got him a replacement birth certificate. I did get that immediately. But to go through and get a replacement social security card is difficult. It's quite difficult. And he hasn't felt well enough to do much of anything. So <laughs> I said so. Uh, so the wallet is there. Those things do not need to be in his wallet. I couldn't believe he had them in his wallet. I told him to put them in his office in a bag. He has a blue office in a bag. He keeps all his important papers in. In fact, he has two of them. One of them's red and one of them's blue. And the red one, he keeps his important papers in. Yep, and he has a blue one. That he keeps all his car stuff in. So today he had ninety dollars burning his burning in his wallet. He had not he went yard selling yesterday and he's gone yard selling today. And he is having more fun. So they rearranged the furniture, they changed where the living room was, and he is just beside himself. He was a nervous wreck last night. I told him to put on some calm music, calm himself down, and go to bed. And so he did that, and this morning they finished up, and it is looking good. I'm telling you, it's looking good. So don't pull out. Here's the rule. Don't pull out more than you can put back in one hour. Got it? Don't pull out more than you can put back in one hour. So today he was at this yard sale, and... I forget what he was looking for. He's been wanting a fireplace. He's been wanting a real fireplace. But, you know, you just can't always find a real fireplace. Well, there was one in a yard sale that is a propane fireplace. A propane fireplace. And I think he gave 20 bucks for it. 20 bucks for it. Now, I don't think he's going to use it as a fireplace. But it's still... He's going to put a TV on top of it. He's going to have to anchor it to the wall because you don't want things up too high with that. But think about it. He got blessed. He got blessed by finding his wallet and his Social Security card and his birth certificate. All that was in there. And we didn't even look in the sofa. We didn't even look in the sofa. Robert said, well, why didn't you look there the first thing? I said, because we'd only just sat down in the sofa when I said, where's your wallet? I was doing some car insurance or something for him. Uh, where is he going to put? He has a wall to put it on. Yeah, he's rearranged his furniture. It is amazing what he has done. I think he's directed and Chuck and Brad have been doing it for him, but... It's kind of nice. Well, he found a barbecue grill, and I think he got the, the grill, and it's a Weber grill. He found the grill and a big picture to go over the back of his sofa that's textured, he says. I don't know what that means. I know what it means, but I can't imagine it. And he is going to just, he's, he's decorating his, he's nesting like some woman. <laughs> and we've all done it. We have all done it. But he's so proud of his car and his house. And he's helping people. He's helping Brad and Chuck. And Brad just got a new job. And Chuck is cooking. And 
He asked me today how to make cornbread, so I found him my cornbread recipe, which I didn't have. I had to figure it out. So, folks, life is looking up. Life is looking up. Now he's got to go for chemo tomorrow or Tuesday. I don't know which day it is. But it's it's hard. It's hard, but I had a story one time. I lost, um, when I was married to my second guy I was married to. I don't call him a husband because that doesn't count. Because we weren't married even a year. Uh, and I was doing a fly fishing class. And it had been a bad day. I had had two flat tires. And it was just a bad day. And I put, I had on a denim shirt and I put a $50 bill in my pocket right here. And you know, that's all the money I had and I lost that $50 bill. Well, that taught me a big lesson. But I contacted the fly fishing student. We were at his house giving lessons and, and Chuck just blew up. I mean, that's what his name was. He just blew up. It was not the Chuck that's living with, with Ben, but he just blew up blew up. And I said, you know, I didn't do it on purpose. It's not my fault. I mean, yeah, it probably was my fault, but I didn't do it on purpose. So I contacted the guy where I lost it. And you know, that was in October, September, October. And before you know it, it snows and and I told him I had lost a 50 I even told him how I had folded it. Come springtime, Mother's Day weekend, Chuck had left. You know, we had had our first fight and he took off. Oh, well. Good, good riddance. He showed me who he was that day. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. For God's sakes, believe them. So, ah, there I said it again. Therefore... I opened the mail up one day, and there is this $50 bill. He says, I think you lost, it, lost this down by the creek, and I found it mowing today. And I'm thinking, glory be to God. I didn't have any money. Chuck had stolen everything out of, my bank, out of our bank account, took it all. I had overdrawn my very first check in my whole life, and I had no money, no money. And there, God knew that I was going to need that $50. God knew it. And he sent it to me. Except it, I just put it in a savings account of the yard by the creek. Until this fly fisherman found it for me and sent it to me in the mail. How sweet was that? This was before the internet. How sweet was that? It was amazing. So, mm. I got to quit using that bridge word. It was wonderful. So be thankful. I said it again. Be thankful when things happen that you don't expect because God's got a plan. And that plan is going to change your life when you recognize it. God has a plan. And just don't ever... Um, Beat yourself up over something because things happen that are out of your control. I had never lost money before, ever. But God knew I would need it. He knew I would need it. And he knew Ben would need it. Yep, he knew Ben would need it. We looked everywhere. We I went into the CVS and told them that the wallet was missing and... And they knew Ben because they knew me. I'd been going there, picking up his medication. You know, surround yourself with people who are honest, with good people. Now, this is the best thing that's happened all day. Our president, whether you like him or not, he has declared Antifa or Antifa, whatever you want to call it, a domestic terrorist organization. Praise the Lord. They are a domestic terrorist organization. And who is Ben? Ben is my nephew who has just got out of prison in November. 
and he has stage four cancer that we've been fighting. And this, this pandemic has had us on, yeah, he's had a good day today, but he has to go into chemo, his last chemo treatment tomorrow. And then we decide what's next. So God's timing is always perfect. And I said so again. <laughs> I just got to be more mindful. Isn't that right, Leanne? More mindful of what I'm saying. Life is good. Life is good. And we have to be good deed doers. Yeah, all the time. We have to do good deeds for people. We have to do good deeds because those good deeds come back and bless us tenfold. Tenfold, y'all. Tenfold. Recognize when you've been blessed. Recognize all the wonderful things that come into our lives are blessings from God. And we just have to open up our hearts and be ready. Be ready to accept them. Don't say, I don't deserve it. Don't say that. What is Antifa? Uh, it's a domestic terrorist organization trying to stir up trouble. They're the ones starting the looting. They're breaking the windows. They came prepared. They tore up Seattle and Portland yesterday and New York City and Minneapolis, St. Paul, over 200 businesses were destroyed. People's jobs, I mean, people were being kept away from their jobs. But let's be kind. I mean, now the, the news media isn't even reporting the thousands of people are coming out to clean up the mess that Antifa and the looters are are causing in these cities around the country. Hi, Miss Kaylee. She's my great niece. I don't know who pays them, but they've been giving out money and passing out bricks and Molotov cocktails. Somebody threw a Molotov cocktail into a police car yesterday. It was attempted murder of four police officers. We had a federal worker killed in Oakland, California, when somebody drove up to a federal building and shot out the windows and killed him and hurt another person. I don't know the man's name. They just announced it today. But we've got to t take the negativity that they're doing and turn it into positive stuff. And people are doing it. They're going at... They're going into the cities with their brooms and their buckets and their garbage cans and they're cleaning up the glass and boarding up. St. Patrick's Cathedral, they vandalized St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. You've never heard of Antifa or Antifa. They are an anarchist organization. They want no laws. They want no liberty. That's, well, all they want is to be able to do and tr create chaos. What happened at the Ryman Auditorium? They damaged historic... Oh, they did... That's just awful. Our historic landmarks... Oh, don't get me started. I love the Ryman Auditorium. It's one of my first memories of going to the Ryman Auditorium. So I'm going to calm down. Look for the good. I, there was a good story last night on the news. I, I think it was in Arizona. This family had a car wreck. And they walked away from their car. And there's this little five-year-old girl. And the state trooper stops. And he, he stops. He gets out of his car. He goes up to the family. He said, are y'all okay? And this little five-year-old girl, this precious little girl, she lifts up her arms and she says, she, he knew she needed a hug and he picked her up and held her. He picked her up and held her and loved her and 
And she knew he was there to help her. He wasn't there to hurt her. He wasn't there to hurt her. He was there to help. Let's be kind to others. Do good deeds. Share the love. You know, love your neighbor is is what we're commanded to do. And you know how we're supposed to love our neighbor? Like we love ourselves. If we can, if we don't love ourselves, we can't love someone else. So let's reach out and love others and learn from their example. <laughs> well, Antifa is now a terrorist organization. Thank the Lord. They threw at the horses. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh well. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for our country. This is not acceptable to burn down our city. Now, I'm not a city person. I don't like cities. I never have liked cities. But some people do. Some people do. And that's their prerogative. They can live in the city. That's fine. I like living in the country. I have always lived in the country. I have never lived in... The closest thing I've come to living in a city is being at Ben's house and taking care of him. That's the closest I've come. Well, folks, I love you all. Y'all take care of yourself. Do a good deed. Say prayers. And if you have grown children who you think may be out in the midst of these, these um, riotous neighborhoods, call them up and tell them to come visit you. Uh, Find out where they are. I saw one mama a few months ago who recognized her child on the street in his Antifa mask and and black. They dress in all black with a black mask and black hoodie. And she recognized her son through all that garb and grabbed him by the ear and took him to the car. <laughs> Yes, today is Pentecost. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. In the name of Jesus. I love you all. I will see you in the morning. At 11 o'clock, we are going to bless our homes. And in the, in the same time, we're going to bless our nation. See you later. Bye.